Thank you so much, President Tatum, and thank you for that warm introduction and for this tremendous honor. It's a privilege to share the podium with you and with my friend and my role model, Marion Wright Edelman. What incredibly inspiring leaders they are. Now, I believe a good commencement speech should be like a good commencement speaker, short. <laughs> this is really your day to celebrate with loved ones, and you must be getting pretty warm in your robes, because I'm getting warm in mine. So I'll make a deal with you. The more clapping I hear, the shorter the speech. Okay? You're going to make a liar out of me. I want to start with the parents and grandparents and friends in the audience today. My own kids are still several years away from this, so I can only begin to imagine the depths of your pride in these tremendous young women. You have raised them, nurtured them, and let them make their own way in the world. Today marks a milestone for you, too. You'll miss hearing their tales of campus life and the excitement in their voices as they describe their studies and discoveries. But I'm pretty sure you won't miss the tuition bills. That's what someone I know calls change you can believe in. <laughs> Parents, grandparents, families, friends, thank you for your countless silent sacrifices and your boundless support of these young women. And congratulations to you as well on reaching this blessed day. I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to recall the sad and senseless loss this close-knit community suffered last fall. On behalf of President and Mrs. Obama, let me convey our deepest condolences to the loved ones and friends of Jasmine Lynn and to the entire Spellman family. Jasmine loved this place and her friends here loved her back. We will never know what mark she would have made in our world. We just know that all of us have lost something unique and precious. Our joy is tempered by sorrow at her absence. Now, young women, it is you I've come to talk to today. You are graduating at a truly amazing moment, a moment of perhaps unprecedented change and opportunity, a time of challenge and change so rapid that it can make you rub your eyes in disbelief. Eras of change often cause us to cherish the values that do not change, to reaffirm the principles that define who we are as a people and a nation. This is such a moment when we're called again to test the founding proposition of our republic, that all men, and yes, all women, are truly created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. These words still sound the American chord. 
Those words are still our creed and our calling. Those words are still America's harbor and America's horizon. You can no more separate the concept of equality from America than you can have strong bones without healthy marrow. The question for us today is not whether we have heard the promise of equality, but whether we are truly serious about realizing it. Not whether we acknowledge the great philosophical truth that runs through the Declaration of Independence, through the Gettysburg Address, and Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, but whether finally we are willing to work together to make that truth fully manifest at home and abroad. I hope we are, because I believe we must. The pursuit of genuine equality has been the animating theme of many of our best leaders, most worthy labors. My own passion is to give sinew and strength to the deeply American proposition that we are each human beings of equal worth, equal dignity, and equal consequence, who thus must enjoy equal rights. If we genuinely believe this, then we are obliged to ensure that no one is left to languish in poverty, violence, or despair. People can't be truly equal if they live in fear or famine. People can't be equal if they lack cover from the elements or access to health care or medicine to protect their families from treatable killers, whether diabetes, tuberculosis, or HIV AIDS. People can't be equal if they are unable to send their kids to a decent school or any school at all. People can't be equal if they're unable to speak freely, to trust in the rule of law, and to find shelter beneath the shade of durable democracy. People can't be equal if their leaders are corrupt or care more about their grip on power than about delivering for their citizens. Human beings around the world share common dreams, dreams of freedom, prosperity, and security. So being serious about equality means striving to realize those shared hopes that unite ordinary people across our interconnected world. Being serious about equality means helping forgotten communities and fragile states build their capacity to deliver greater opportunity to their citizens. Being serious about equality means ensuring that people everywhere, from Harlem to Harare, can contribute to the full extent of their talents. This isn't asking for the moon. It's asking for decency and dignity. For it is America's founding premise and promise that in a moral sense, all our fates are bound together. And it's America's modern course and urgent challenge to work with partners old and new to help create a world that raises us all up. Now, America is an inspiring model of equality and justice for many in the world but we are not nearly a perfect one. We still have miles and miles to go, but the struggle only makes the promise matter more.